very good morning to you again. It's Wednesday the 8th of September and I trust you have enjoyed this past week of spring. But we've been looking over the past two days, we've been looking at uh, the first two verses of Paul's letter to the church, his first letter to the church in Corinth. And this morning we get to verse 3. He said that he's introduced himself as being Paul, an apostle, call, called to be an apostle. Um, and, and he's spoken to the church in Corinth as being people who are also called, called to be saints. And we too are called to be saints. And then he pronounces a blessing. And it's a, it's a strange blessing, a strange phrase, because it is simply a, a phrase as it occurs in the original, because there's no verb in this sentence. Um, so I oh, beg your pardon, it can't be a sentence, it's just a, a, a phrase. So this is what he says, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 3, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Th those, those words grace and peace are words with which we're very familiar in the Christian context. But all too often they are are misunderstood. I think time and again we've spoken about grace in the context that, at United. Uh, and grace is something that we get to understand in our heads. Grace is, is understanding that God has loved us so much that He has done all that is necessary to make it possible for us to be His, for us to in fact be saints, holy, um, as we read in, in verse 2 yesterday. And, and it's only because of His grace. It's not because we have any special uh, abilities, any ability to, to discipline ourselves or to, or to be religious or to be holy. It, it, it's God who in His grace makes that possible. It's out of His love that that is possible. But grace is something that we that we understand in our minds, we understand that is purely out of His love, His kindness, His generosity, that we are who we are, that we are Christians, that we are together, the Church of God. It is all simply because of His grace. Now, now we understand that intellectually, but, but then we need to move to the, 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 the phase of accepting it and, and making a willful choice, a decision, to accept that grace. And that is what makes Christians different from other people. That Christians are people who accept that it is God's grace that has made us His children. That actually makes us saints. And then he says, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Peace is the result of making the choice to accept God's grace and to continue to live our lives in that grace and wanting to please Him by being holy. And so this morning, I, I need to ask you, uh, do you, do you think you have a good grasp of the understanding of what grace is? Have you made that commitment to that acceptance, taken that step of acceptance in your wills to say, yes, I accept that God loves me and that He has done all that is necessary for me to be forgiven and to be His child. And then Paul's longing is that the Corinthians might experience God's peace once they, once they come to that point of acceptance. And my longing for you is that whenever you come to that, or have come to that point of, of acceptance, that you would know God's peace. The peace of God. That's the experience. Grace is an intellectual concept. We need to respond with our wills, but then He floods our being with His peace. That's His gift to us. Or at least one of them. This morning, won't you take off time to spend just a few moments, few minutes, 
thanking God for His grace towards you and relaxing in peace in His presence. May it be so.